in the previous course, uh, we uh, it was mentioned uh, that the um, uh, reversible isothermal and the reversible adiabatic processes are very special processes in thermodynamics. Okay, uh, and based on this fact, we also uh, put together the Corno cycle. Uh, out of these two processes alone. So, the Corno cycle comprises entirely of uh, the reversible isothermal and the reversible adiabatic process. Okay? And um, it may also be recalled that uh, the Corno cycle is executed by a fixed quantity of mass. So, basically it is a thermodynamic system which executes a non-flow process. Okay? And the work interaction for such a process you may recall would simply be W over m is equal to integral 1 to 2. Uh, p d v and this in p v coordinates this integral is nothing but the area under the process curve for a system executing a non flow process. What we are going to do uh, now is develop a similar expression for a control volume in which a reversible isothermal or reversible adi adiabatic process is being executed Okay, because we will have occasion to use this uh, as we go along. So, this is a very important derivation and uh, uh, the most important thing here is that uh, the, process, uh, the process that we are considering, both the processes that we are considering are internally reversible. So, reversible isothermal and reversible isentropic internally reversible. Okay. So, in the absence of any internal uh, irreversibilities, we may write the entropy balance equation like this again for a steady flow situation. So, you may recall that the entropy balance equation look like this for a steady flow situation. So, in the absence of any uh, internal irreversibilities, this becomes uh, 0. So, we end up with the expression that we wrote down just now. So, this is the expression that we end up with. We may write this as uh, minus m dot integral 1 to 2 ds. Okay. Now, steady flow energy equation applied to this uh, control volume uh, reads like this w x dot equal to q dot plus m dot h 1 minus h 2 after neglecting k e and p e changes. h 1 minus h 2 in the same manner as s 1 minus s 2 may be written as integral 1 to 2 dh. And dh itself you may recall uh, may be written like this from the TDS relationship. So, dh itself is equal to TDS minus Vdp. So, we may finally write Wx dot equal to q dot minus m dot integral 1 to 2 TDS plus Vdp. Now, let us simplify this expression in turn for a reversible isentropic uh, process, I am sorry for a reversible adiabatic process and for a reversible iso uh, isothermal process. So, for a control volume executing an isentropic process, q dot is equal to 0, ds is also equal to 0. So, this expression simplifies like this. So, for this case, q dot is 0, ds is also 0. So, this expression simplifies to wx dot equal to minus m dot times vdp, right. So, it simplifies to uh, wx dot over m dot equal to minus integral 1 to 2 vdp. So, uh, for a compression process, you can see that this is the uh, process curve for, uh, for an isentropic process going from 1 to 2. So, this is a compression process and this one, so let me write it explicitly here. So, this is a compression process going from 1 to 2s like this and this is an expansion process going from 1 to 2s like this. So, we have here we have illustrated an isentropic process for an ideal gas which is why we have written P v raised to 1.4 equal to constant. Okay. So, notice that this area under this curve is equal to minus integral V d p and similarly here. So, this quantity here so, this quantity here w x dot over m dot uh, may be interpreted as specific power. 
specific power or because the units do not have uh, uh, time dependence on them, units for this quantity, we also refer to it as work interaction. So, a specific power or work interaction is just minus 1 to 2 integral Vdp and that is nothing but the area that is indicated here for an isentropic process. I am sorry, this is uh, this area is not correct. So, let us just, uh, just correct it. So, this is the area that we are talking about for an isentropic process. Okay. Now, let us just illustrate the same thing for a non-flow process. So, for a system which executes a non-flow process between the same two states, uh, executes a non-flow isentropic process between the same two states, the work interaction for that case W dot over M dot would have been this here. Similarly, So, it would have been this area. For a steady flow process, the area is as sh shown here. Okay? So, that is uh, very important to keep in mind. Now, let us look at the next situation, uh, reversible isothermal process. So, in case the system executes a reversible isothermal process, then uh, this integral may be simplified this integral may be simplified quite nicely uh, because temperature is constant we may take this outside and write it like this okay so we may take the temperature outside and that is a constant and this integral cs integral cs uh, delta q dot is the uh, is nothing but the total heat transfer net heat transfer to the control volume so, integral C s delta q dot is the heat transferred across the entire control surface so that is nothing but the net heat transfer to the control volume. So, we may write it as equal to q dot. So, we get a nice expression like this in this case. Okay? We may take the temperature inside the integral because it is a constant. So, w x dot over m dot is equal to q dot over m dot minus this uh, integral and q dot over m dot itself may be replaced using this expression here. So, then you can see that these two cancel out. So, we end up surprisingly with the same expression as we did for uh, an isentropic flow process. Okay? The specific power is equal to minus integral 1 to 2 Vdp. Okay? And the process curve for the reversible isothermal process is shown here using the chain line. So, that is the T equal to constant line. So, let us just uh, see if we can so, the area that we are talking about in this case is equal to this. And had this been a non flow process executed by a system between the same states, then the area would have been. And similarly, here also. The expression is the same, area enclosed is the same uh, in the in the sense that the area enclosed is given uh, as shown here. Notice that uh, the uh, in case of a compression process where we are uh, putting in uh, work or power, the power required for compressing between the same two pressures. Notice that the pressure at uh, 2s and pressure at 1. Uh, I mean, in each case, we are starting from the same initial state and compressing uh, to the same final state here. Or in this case, we are starting from the same initial state and expanding to the same pressure between 2s and 2. So, for both the uh, reversible adiabatic process and reversible isothermal process, we are compressing uh, across the same or expanding across the same pressure in these two illustrations. Notice that the power required is less for the reversible isothermal process for a uh, compression process and the power produced by a reversible isothermal process is more in the case of an expansion process. So, this shows that the reversible isothermal process is better when it comes to power absorption for a compression process and power generation for a uh, for an expansion process. So, it seems to be the ideal process. 
which is somewhat surprising because if you, you may recall that when we de when we defined isentropic efficiency, we said that the isentropic process was the ideal process uh, against which the actual process has to be compared. But this illustration very nicely shows that uh, the reversible isothermal process is ideal in terms of uh, power. So, we will incorporate these sorts of um, variations from what we studied in the previous course to uh, have better metrics defined for actual processes. So, some of the subtle differences uh, come about because we now have uh, slightly more uh, uh, comprehensive analysis taking into account internal and external irreversibility. So, what we will uh, do in the next lecture is to start uh, our discussion of exergy. Okay. And then uh, the most important uh, thing that will come out of this module is the definition of uh, second law efficiency. Okay. And we will compare this with the isentropic efficiency that we defined in the previous course and see how much more general and useful the second law efficiency is and indeed the notion of exergy.